<laughs> With winter comes fears of the flu. And sometimes the flu can be deadly, especially the bird flu. You've all heard of it. It's a virus that people catch from birds, like chickens. It's already killed hundreds of people. Fortunately, this bird flu does not spread easily from person to person. But if it evolves a way to do that, we could be in big trouble. Correspond Correspondent Chad Cohen met up with folks who are trying to stop that from happening by taking a closer look into our past at the most deadly viral outbreak ever. Whatever scary things are lurking in the back of your freezer, I'll venture a guess. You've got nothing on Terrence Tumpy. Getting into his deep freeze at the CDC in Atlanta is like prepping for a spacewalk. Frozen inside sits a tiny vial of what might be the deadliest pathogen in history. A virus that hadn't been seen in almost 90 years. The 1918 flu. Until Tumpy brought it back from the dead. 1918 was the worst pandemic we've seen for any virus, and this killed probably at least 50 million people worldwide. In 1918, flu took three times as many lives as all of World War I. So the question is, why was it in 1918 so different? Why did it cause so many excess deaths compared to other pandemics? And could a flu that deadly strike again? We do know where all flu viruses get their start, in the digestive tracts of birds. They just happily coexist there, not causing disease for the most part in wild birds. But every once in a while, an ordinary bird flu changes. It's a mistake in nature. These viruses actually get out and infect other hosts. Hosts like people. That's what scientists think may have happened in 1918. The thought was that in 1918, the virus did cross the species barrier and directly infect humans. That's one theory at least. And when a virus that begins in birds gains the ability to pass from human to human, infecting our lungs, spreading through coughs and sneezes, no one's immune because it's never been around before. And that's when a pandemic occurs. We're hearing a lot recently about the threat of a new pandemic the avian flu. It's quite lethal, transmitted through close contact with birds to people who work and live near birds. Fortunately, this virus has not figured out how to efficiently transmit itself from human to human. Infected people, in other words, cannot infect other people. The question is, will they ever be able to? And if so, how? And when this virus does strike, why does it kill? Terence Tumpy believes he can find the answers by experimenting with the flu that transmitted and killed very well. The 1918 virus. By having this in hand, we can actually try to understand better how these pandemic flu viruses work. There was just one small problem. The 1918 virus hadn't been around for nine decades. No one had ever been able to study the 1918 virus, this horrible killer virus, because there were no isolates, no living samples. But biologist Jeffrey Taubenberger, searching through preserved tissue samples of World War I soldiers, was able to recover the 1918 flu's genetic code. Somewhere buried within are instructions that give it the ability to kill. But where? Unfortunately, when you look at the genetic sequence, the blueprint of this virus, there's no smoking gun that tells us that this particular virus is lethal. Tumpy couldn't find an answer by simply reading a recipe for the 1918 flu virus. He needed to experiment with a real thing. We felt like it was important to actually reconstruct this virus. That's right. He said reconstruct. Rebuild the 1918 flu from scratch. One of the most lethal viruses we've ever known. Using Taubenberger's recipe and a technique called reverse genetics, Scientists at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine added all the chemical building blocks in the right order and the right amounts. And it worked. 
They created a living 1918 virus so nasty that when Tumpy exposed lab mice to it, they were all dead in just three days. I was quite surprised. I didn't anticipate that they would die that quickly. That was very quick. And that was just what happened to humans in 1918. Unlike normal flu strains, which can only infect high in the respiratory tract, the 1918 virus attacked tissue deep in the lungs as well. And that's a vulnerable spot. The delicate areas of our lung tissues causing this extreme inflammation resulting in death. The 1918 flu so badly inflamed those areas of its victim's lungs that many died through suffocation. And as it happens, that's just how the avian flu kills too. Those are important uh, characteristics and similarities among the, the 1918 virus as well as the avian virus. So these two deadly viruses attack similar parts of the lungs. But that still doesn't answer the biggest question. Will the avian flu ever transmit from people to people like the 1918 virus did? Well, first let's back up a little bit. How does flu infect us in the first place? So this is what flu looks like under a microscope, an electron microscope, yeah. An actual flu virus. But for our purposes, let's represent a virus by this unpleasant fellow. For all his nastiness, he isn't all that complex. In fact, he only has eight genes. We, by comparison, have...